YouTube, Team Keep It Clean. What's going on? It's another episode of NFL Question from Subs, uh, a series where you can ask any question you want and we answer it in a video just like this. It's been a long time since we've been able to drop one of these because Ravens have had so much continuing to go on. Uh, and, and who knows when you're going to see this video? I'm recording this on uh, January 29th, no, 28th. I see, I got my days all mixed up because just Ravens just been crazy with so much. But anyway, if you want to be part of it, uh, you can send me an email to teamkeepitclean at gmail.com or for the patrons. And this is going to be a patron only episode in this one. But for the patrons, you can send it directly on Patreon. Team Keep It Clean, I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. We got some questions that we've been meaning to get to for a long time. So let's do it. First question came from my guy Phil. He said, now that McDonald is our defensive coordinator, I know defensive end Aiden Hutchinson, who had 14 sacks, is projected to go in the top one, two, three, four, five of this year's draft. But do you think that the Ravens would make the move at 14 to select Michigan's other pass rusher, David Ajabo, who had 11 sacks and eight QB hits uh, if he was to fall to number 14? He would be a great fit with OA. What are your thoughts? Uh, a lot of disagreeing with me on Facebook on perhaps making this move in the first round. Maybe they don't understand Bowser tore his Achilles week 18 and may not be ready to play at the beginning of next season. And that is very, very true. So this has, as soon as the Ravens made it official with Mike McDonald, a lot of people were on this. They were like, hey, these two, they went to high school together. Of course, all them pictures started servicing or whatever. Adafi away with the little baby twist. They, I, I don't think those were dreads yet. They probably ain't even locked in yet. But anyway, um, a pa pass rush, a pass rusher uh, is a very important part of what the Ravens need moving forward. Now, of course, we know they need to build that line around Lamar Jackson. They need to build it like crazy. Um, they need to really invest in that. Again, Ronnie Stanley, bonus. Jawan James, bonus. You obviously hope you can get both of them back healthy, but they are bonuses. You can't fully count on them, uh, and you need to have a plan. Uh, so, you know, Ravens, a lot of times when they zig, when well, people expect them to zig, they end up zagging, uh, and the draft is no different. They do a lot of BPA, um, and I don't expect it to be any different this year. Of course, you got to mix in best play available with uh, need as well. Um, but yeah, Bowser is going to be out uh, most likely. This is not confirmed, but most likely he ain't going to be ready at the beginning of the season. So we'll see. Um, but even still, even if Bowser was coming back, you still, Pernell McPhee, possible free agent. Um, who else? As far as defensive end, Derek Wolf. You're not really expect uh, get another bonus. I don't expect him to be on the team, though, but we'll see uh, what they do. Dalen Hayes. Hey, we'll see. Dalen Dip Hayes. I uh, was hoping that we'd be able to see that dip, but uh, they stashed him, and then he came back, and then he really got hurt. But anyway, um, Ajabo, I, I, um, a lot of people put me on uh, to what happened with them because they said uh, Hutchinson and Ajabo, well, there was nobody talking about them before Mike McDonald got there. Nobody was talking about them before. Uh, they definitely weren't projected to be first-round picks. And then they said, oh, Mike McDonald showed up. And now both of them could be going by in the top 10. It's a possibility. Both of them could be going in the first round either way. And that, that says a lot um, about his impact on that defense. Um, but that would be interesting. Uh, and I would not be surprised if Ravens made a move like that. Now, um, it... It, of course, all depends on how the draft will fall. It will depend on who's available. It depends on how high they had him ranked. But he is somebody that I believe is very uh, raw when it comes to football. Just like Adafi Away, though. Adafi Away, he played for like five, he had like five years of football experience. Uh, and I think with uh, Ojawa, it's the same way. He got like four or five years of football experience. So very young. Doesn't mean he can't do the job. Um, but just very young and inexperienced, but obviously got experience with Ravens' new defensive coordinator. So if they were to get him, um, mm, yeah, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't be mad at that. Uh, it just depends on what what else they do at, on the offensive line because you, you got to do a lot there, man. You really do, <laughs> especially at tackle, especially at tackle. At guards, you're straight. At center, you're straight either way, in my opinion, whether it's Bozeman or Tristan Colon Castillo. But at tackle... You're hoping that guys are healthy, but you, you got to, like, fix that. And, again, 
with Patrick McCarry too. I feel like he should be sort of a, a backup option. I feel like you can, like he can be your starter, and you could do okay. You could do fine with him there, but I even feel like they should invest in right tackle as well. Again, Juwan bonus, bonus. So I wouldn't be opposed if they did it, uh, but it also just depends on what what else they do in the draft. Um, I, I keep hearing from people that uh, Aiden Hutchinson, he's more like solid um, than Ojabo is. Uh, and I mean, Ravens, they definitely ain't getting him. <laughs> like he'll, he'll, he'll be out of there. He'll be long gone uh, by the time the Ravens draft. Even if they decided for some crazy reason, which I don't expect them to, but if, even if they decided to trade up, yeah, he, he'll be long gone because people know it's, it's a passing league um, and you need pass rushers. You need quality pass rushers. Um, so we'll see how this thing ends up. Next question came from my guy, Jay. Frank, he said, what's good, bro? Hope you and the fam are doing well. Appreciate it. Uh, he said, with the expected hiring of McDonald, I can't help but think about the what if. Even though McDonald was always a candidate, I don't think the other scheduled interviews were just for show. Oh, really? I, I do, but okay, let's see what you got to say, my friend. I think the other candidates were real options, but instead of the front office keeping the fire under Harbs, they let him off the hook and gave him an extension. Uh, what did he do? Not even a week after his extension, where before it seemed like he was going to turn a new leaf with his hiring process, Hobbs goes right back to hiring his boys. I don't want to condemn McDonald too early, but I wonder how much Hobbs extension played into this expected hiring. That's a uh, really good question. And I think that was a big part of it because uh, with, with Harbaugh's contract extension, that uh, shows that the Ravens well, expect it. Yeah, expect the contract extension because it's not official yet. But that will show that the Ravens are like, hey, we locked in with John Harbaugh. And if you're going to come be a defensive coordinator here, we want you to be locked in with us, too. It's not just a one year thing, even though it's a possibility that it could be a one year thing. If he does good enough and teams see that it's like this young guy by the end of this next by the end of next season, he'll be 35. And it'll be like, whoa, this 35 year old defensive coordinator. He came in with the Ravens and he did all this work and it, it went like that. Wow. OK, hey, we want him to be a head coach. But if you have a, a head coach just sitting there in, in one year status, then you could be like, oh, he might get fired and the whole staff might get fired. Do I really want to go there? So that's all I think it was. The next question came from my boy Olu. He said, what's up, sir? Hope all is well. Mike McDonald is our guy. I'm not crazy about it, but don't be surprised if David Ajabu falls to us. Well, he still, he would have to fall to the Ravens unless Ravens went up and grabbed the butt. We'll see. Uh, that's the other rush in from Michigan. Adafi Away and Ajabu went to the same high school. Both are similar in size. Could be interesting. They know each other. Both are very raw. Man, see, I wish I should have read this question first. He's saying everything that we were saying, too. Uh, both are very raw, but if worked right, could be a crazy force. Uh, I still like a DB if it's the kid from Cincinnati or the defensive tagger from Georgia. So you're talking about Sauce and Jordan Davis, I think, uh, in the first. But I can totally see us going for the Michigan kid. Uh, Daxton Hill is another name that I wouldn't be surprised if we snagged him in the later rounds. He's a defensive back. What do you think about the hire? And do you think he will keep most of the guys already in the coaching stable? I think he will, reason being because he came from this coaching stable. He came from the Ravens. It's not like this is really an outside hire. Uh, he went to Michigan for a year, but he had been with the Ravens since 2014. So I wouldn't expect him to come in and be the defensive coordinator and be like, all right, all y'all boys got to go. I mean, so, sometimes sometimes people do do that, though. Some, some people do do that. You get them that power, and they be like, all right, yeah, I, I used to be with y'all, but I got the power now. Y'all can go. Bye. But I, I wouldn't expect him to. Um, but, hey, you never know. He might want to bring on his own guys. Uh, but I just I don't see it happening, though, because he's again, he's been working with those guys from 2014, been with the team for a while. So I don't really see in him making very significant changes to the staff, anything like that. Next question came from my guy Martin. He said, why don't the Ravens listen to the fans? Ooh, OK. He said, I know we fans get hot and we act like we know more than they do. But so but so things are so simple uh, to me. Well, we all said that the Ravens should have started Bozeman at center position, but for the Ravens, I feel like that never moved him, to, or they never moved him just to spite us, and, and they were forced to move him to center, uh, and wouldn't you know it, the fans were right, <laughs> and that would be about like them playing a lot of guys out of position, and them having struggles at the center position, and then they just kept on wondering why, what's going on, but it's all good, and work, works out in the long run for the Ravens. Well, in the short run for the Ravens because he did a good job overall. Uh, but in the long run, it works out for Bozeman because he can get that bread. Anyway, um, 
I've been a big Harbaugh fan, but I 100% agree with you. Uh, keep Harbaugh if he's willing to change his philosophy. If not, hey, appreciate all that you've done, but we need to part ways. This rotating players, every play has to stop. This is why we get so many silly penalties because people are moving so much they don't know when they are supposed to come in and come out of the lineup. We need to get the ball to our playmakers, not just have them block 80% of the game. It's like, what was the point of drafting Bateman if you weren't going to use him? Why not draft an offensive lineman? They're not throwing shade. I'm, I'm not throwing shade at Bateman, but this coaching staff, uh, with his lack of use, they they stop throwing. They need to stop throwing screen passes to Marquise Brown. It's not working, and stop running draw plays on second and seventeen. Ooh, this was a uh, little bit of a rant mixed with question, and it's a lot in here. Um, it's a lot in here, but it, it's a lot about Ravens' um, philosophy, uh, especially when it comes to offensive linemen. Ravens. Uh, that would be a big philosophy change that I feel could do the Ravens just wonders. If when they draft offensive linemen, they like to draft guys that can do this and that or do that and that or do that and that or do this and this. Instead of just drafting a guy that specializes there. And it's nice to have guys that have versatility. You love versatility, but at the same time, look at Wink's defense. Very versi versatile. You got to have guys that do so many things, but they couldn't specialize in one area. So you, you want guys that can be great in one area. Uh, and then I know Ravens, they, they hope guys that are good in multiple areas. But you, I feel like they got to look for some guys that are great uh, in one area. And as far as the offensive play calling and, and the use of their weapons, yeah, that's, that's definitely got to improve. Because we talked about how um, Ravens could bring on this guy, that guy, this wide receiver, that wide receiver. But if they're not getting used, if they're not even out there on the field for plays, then what would be the use? Next question came from Nana. She said, I ain't graving the Bills versus Chiefs game brought a lot to my mind. A lot. But what stood out for the most part for me was sitting there watching this thriller of a game was their awesome coaches and their great coaching. It was very apparent watching these two masterminds of the game at work uh, with McDermott and Reed. Coach Reed and McDermott uh, team's game planning and preparation were on display. And these guys were like none other that I've ever seen in the NFL. Players on both teams and both sides of the ball not only knew their assignments, but they executed well. I say great training, great coaching, and discipline were contributing factors. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, it's got to be a healthy mix of literally everything. Everything. Uh, for sure. Because if you don't have everything, then it's not going to work. Starts with coaching. They got to get these players right. Then the players, they got to perform right. So it's, it's a big process. But if you get all everything clicking, then it obviously shows up in the end. Uh, she said, we could clearly recognize these coaches are very knowledgeable of the game and making contributions from the beginning to the end of the game that were uh, engaging, not, re or not relying on their OC and DC. Uh, when they were required to make adjustments, they were able to adapt and they did it on the fly. This has never or very seldomly happened under John Harbaugh as our team coach and his sidekicks, Greg Roman. Uh, and it looks like we have a very long way to go to be able to compete in the AFC, uh, or even the rest of the league with these caliber of teams we've watched in these seasons playoffs. Even as talented as Lamar is, I don't see him taking on any of these great playoff teams we've been watching over the past weeks around the league by himself, as he often works to try to make something happen and him being successful. Mm. You said a lot right there. Uh, and yeah, Ravens, Ravens got to step up a lot uh, when it comes to just being able to keep up with those teams. But yeah, we, we know the, the Ravens did beat the Chiefs earlier. We know that. Um, but would they beat them in the playoffs? Would they beat the Bills in the playoffs? Anything's possible, but it, it would take a lot. And Ravens just got to get their firepower up. They got to get their firepower up. They, they, they got some bullets, but they don't ever be loading them in the chamber. They don't load them in the chamber. So it, it's important that the Ravens, like, first, you, you got to, again, you got to have that offensive line. They got to get that right. But then they, they, the play calling and just the adjustments and the, the switch-ups, and just being able to attack, 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 attack what your opponent's weakness is. They don't do that enough. They, 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 they get out of the flow of the game too many times. Um, they, they, there's drops. They, there's, there's, sometimes there can be just a lot of confusion. Like somebody, uh, Martin, was just talking about in a previous question. Um, it's, it's just a lot. It's a lot of little cleaning up that they need to do in order to just do better. And that's from coaching. That's from players. That, that's from everybody. If they, they got, if they can work on fixing the little stuff, work on fixing the little stuff, and that can go such a long way. Then, of course, you can advance to the bigger stuff, too. Um, 
She said, but we can be we can rest assured, uh, as with everything else, Lamar will get the blame instead of John Harbaugh and Greg Roman, where it squarely belongs. I really can't stand what Steve Vashadi and EDCC and John Harbaugh uh, and Greg Roman that gives them false security that these two walking disasters and failures should continue on in any capacity on our team. Uh, in closing, um, what can we do to support Lamar and encourage better for him from management? Sorry for the lengthy comments. Thank you. Very concerned Ravens fan. What can Ravens do to support Lamar and encourage him, uh, encourage better for him from management? Just hope. <laughs> That's it. Just, just hope uh, that they really, again, they, they build that force field around Lamar, that force field of offensive linemen um, that can protect him, that, uh, that wall that will be in front of him to where it's like, uh-uh, ain't nobody getting through. And then um, Lamar, he got to do better execution too. Um, especially like games like that Browns game, where it was just like, whoa, what's what's that about? Now, and we know that's not the norm from him, but Lamar got stuff that he got to improve on as well. Um, getting the ball out quicker, uh, with the short passes, really uh, putting it on the money for those short passes because they could be sometimes for it's it's weird because for short passes, I know my guy Josh Hoffman brought it up too, uh, but for short passes, sometimes Lamar can throw it like. He could throw it a little too uh too out too far a little too wide uh behind behind the uh, receiver or pass catcher a little too far in front of him. Um, sometimes uh you just gotta work on work on that short pass and that will go such a long way. It will go such a long way. Um, getting the ball out quicker, throwing the ball away, living to see another down. Not not having them. You don't gotta make every single play on every single play. Sometimes you just gotta get rid of it and be like, all right, we lost this down. It's okay. We'll move on. Um, and then, of course, with play calling, that's I feel like we talked about that so much uh, with, with play calling. It's got to be better. Um, play calling got to help your offensive line out. Play calling got to help your quarterback out. Play calling has to see like, all right, what are our weaknesses and how can we counter those? Oh, this next question came from Marco and it was right after Wink had got fired and you were so close, Marco. He said, hey, Engraven, I just saw your video of Wink being fired, and I don't know why, but the first thing that came up to my mind is Jim Harbaugh, and here's my question. Have there ever been a situation where brothers are coaches for the same team, and do you see Jim and John coaching together with Greg since Jim is very familiar with him, uh, and could that even be possible? Ooh, you were so close, because he got the guy from Jim's school, even though he used to work with John before. Um, oh, you were close, but it is possible. It is. That's why I say, you know what? You, you might as well. You might as well bring Jim on too. Might as well. Even though he would probably rather be a head coach. But might as well. Because it, it's a big, this is one big family with the Ravens. So bring on Jim too. I'm sure he'll be at some of the games, man. <laughs> but anyway, he said, one thing I'm getting excited about now is that maybe we're having a, def a new, with a new defensive coach, uh, there will be some changes that are being done. Thank you. and hope you respond to my question. We'd like to know your thoughts. Yeah, that's what um we all hoping for now that, uh, he can uh, just just make some small fixes. Um, let the pass rushes be pass rushes. Uh, give help to your guys. If you see somebody struggling, make adjustments like right away to try to help them. Uh, and just put players in best position so they can be successful as best they can out there on the field. Next question came from my boy Daddy Gaming. He said, what's good, bro beans? I got an insane theory that I would love for your input on uh, with the recent Wink Martindale ousting, LOL. If you remember, Joe Hortiz, the Ravens director of pro personnel, uh, was a top candidate for the Giants GM Open. It was believed that if he were hired for the job, he would bring Wink over with him. So maybe Harvest was planning on firing him to begin with. However, since the Ravens are a class act organization, Harvest might have wanted to wait to let him get that opportunity as Giants head coach. Turns out Joe Schoen from the Bills got hired as the Giants' new GM on January 21st at around noon, the same day Wink was fired. Oh. However, Wink was fired in the evening after Schoen got hired. Harvest probably discussed with EDC and Bishotti for a couple of hours about the possibility of Wink actually landing a head coaching job. Uh, they might have decided to pull the trigger right then and there because they lost hope in a team hiring Wink as a head coach in time since, as we all know, the Ravens want to get started on their offseason ASAP. Like, this firing is pretty late into January and such firings are unusual. I agree. Anyway, this theory could be complete nonsense, but I think this is how it all played out. Let me know what you think. Wow, that does make a lot of sense. I, oh, I didn't even think about that when all that went down. This is what I always say, man. Even if this isn't true, um, it is very, this is like great. 
That's why I always say you cannot be dismissive of Ravens fans and what they be thinking because they can put so much stuff together. And Ravens fans, they pay attention to so much. They pay attention to so much. I love this. Thank you for this. He said, always love watching Viz. Really respect how decent you are as a person and the way you speak. You and your videos have had a real influence on my life. Uh, allow me to have an open mind. Keep cranking out these vids. Oh, man, you ain't had to say all that, man. Got my eyes getting all watery and stuff. Nah, I, I, I appreciate you, though, man. I ain't, I ain't nobody, but uh, nah, I, I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you uh, supporting, too, man. Thank you. All right, next question came from my guy, Adrian. He said, do you think we really need to revamp our offense and defense, or do you think we fix minor details, such as getting one or two more pieces on each side? I, too much, I see too much bickering uh, between fans on what we need to do, and it's annoying. Lamar is fine. I believe Greg Roman asked him to do too much. That's why his longevity throughout the season hasn't been great since 2019. If Greg Roman runs a similar offense to what he has been doing for Tyler Huntley, I feel like we'll be fine. I agree. Um, a, a little bit less Q, QB design runs. I, I feel like the, the runs for Lamar should be if a play breaks down and Lamar like, all right, I'm out, in my opinion. And they can still have some in there, but just scale them back. Scale them back. We know that Lamar is Superman. He can do all this and all that. But I would love to see the Ravens offense co be coached as to not having Lamar have to be Superman. I would love to see them try that. To see, all right, well, let's let's have some other people be the Supermans for our team. I, I would love to see that. Anyway, um, he says, uh, kill the... Oh, I should have kept reading. He said, kill the QB design runs. I hate them. Or take them to one or two a game, not eight. Then Greg will have his job at the end of next season. Uh, Wink is great. Uh, we need to fix the blitz. I think this might have been before he got fired. Uh, we need to fix the blitz on every down with Marcus Peters coming back and Marlowe mixing man and zone in the blitz. We'll really confuse the opposite. I say we need a man on defense who prides nothing but tackling. Our defense has one major problem, and it is tackling. Oh, yeah, that was a huge problem for sure. I also think it's a, a lack of understanding, too. Um, but he said, obviously, injuries this past year, but the big plays wouldn't have happened if we could tackle. So I think we need a linebacker who can get off a lineman and tackle, and it, it isn't being talked about enough. I, I agree. Queen showed great spurts and clutching him at some points, obviously not consistent enough. Uh, we could use D-line, but Adafe has Miles Garrett potential if Wink would just let him attack the QB, which I think will happen next season. Ooh, that's a little awkward, isn't it? Um, but he said, offensively. I don't see us drafting wide receiver. I think we are fine unless we can get Calvin Ridley or Robinson, Allen Robinson. Uh, I wouldn't worry about it too much. They won't come, sadly, but I believe we get rid of Villanueva and draft a tackle or a guard. If not, then they will be getting a linebacker or a corner. These are the biggest needs, in my opinion. Tell me if I'm wrong, Graven, LOL. Oh, I, hey, this, this is your opinion, so it's not right or wrong. It's just your opinion, and that's fine. Uh, the only reason I say corner is just to make sure MP will be ready to go for next year. ACLs are possibly career ending. Sorry for the book. I'm just super happy I'm finally a patron. Uh, this has been bottled up for a year. That's why it's like this. LOL. Thank you, Graven. Hope you and the fam have a blessed day. Hey, it's all good, man. Um, yeah, with inside linebacker is a position that I, I, I agree. It's not being talked about enough. Uh, Patrick Queen, he did struggle there. Um, there were a lot of inconsistencies. You, you, you see the potential, but the wrapping up, the tackling, that has got to get better. That, that's, that's what I feel like has been his biggest issue, has just been the, the consistent or lack of consistency in tackling. Um, and as far as cornerback, getting ready to lose Anthony Averitt, losing Jimmy Smith, Tavon Young possibly. So, yeah, cornerback is a need as well. Um, will they draft it early? Will they draft it late? We'll see. But, yeah, with Marlon Humphrey coming off a season-ending injury, with Marcus Peters coming off a season-ending injury, it's something that you got to think about. Are they going to be the same when they come back? How are they going to be when they come back? You hope that they are just as good as they were before, even better when they come back. But it's something that we just don't know. Anyway, he says, sorry again for my last question. LOL, you're the only guy I can talk to about our team. But my question is, do you really think we could have we could have a head coach come in and do a better job than Harbaugh has these past 14 years? Uh, he's been almost as consistent as Mike Tomlin, and he keeps our physical edge going on. Uh, with new coordinators, and he won a ring in the hardest conference for the past 14 years, considering he had to beat Peyton Manning and Tom Brady, almost all 14. Uh oh, personally, I don't think anyone else out there right now could have could have as much consistency as Harbaugh. The only person that I can think of would be Brian Flores. Any argument that Harbaugh should be fired, I strongly disagree. What do you think? Well, he's getting his extension, so, I mean, this doesn't rule out anything, but... 
No, I, I, I just I just think it's about giving somebody a chance, giving somebody an opportunity. I, I am not one of the people that think that Harbaugh is the end-all, be-all at coaching. I, I know a lot of Ravens fans feel like, oh, it's, it's, it's Harbaugh or nothing. If Ravens got rid of Harbaugh, then, oh, they would sink. They would suck. They'd be sorry. They wouldn't be able to do anything. And I feel like a lot of Ravens fans just, and, and I can understand why, because he's been there for so long. So I understand. A lot of people don't like change. A lot of people are scared of change. And a lot of people, when they've been doing something for so long, they feel like that's the only way that it should be done. That's the only way it can get done. But what, what has gotten done since that Super Bowl? What has gotten done? Yes, we know his only losing season is technically when, when, when a lot of people got hurt. But how many real winning seasons has he had? Nine and seven is technically a winning season. Ten and six is, is a winning season. It is technically winning seasons, but how much was really won? In those seasons, there are people who could come in and, and do just the same job as Harbaugh, possibly even better. We won't know that until we know. But again, my thinking is that Harbaugh, Harbaugh is cool. He's nice, but he's not the only guy out there that can get a job done. Next question came from my guy, Marco. He said, what's good, Engraven? Hope you're good. Oh, yeah, yeah, we good. Two questions. Do you think the failed two-point conversions will play a role in Harbaugh's decision on Giro? Hmm. Well, what decision? A decision to keep him or them possibly letting him go? But either way, no. I don't, I don't think it plays any role. I think that's more Hobbs than anything. Um, and he said, secondly, do you think Jim Caldwell would be a candidate for the offensive coordinator position? Nah, I, I don't. I, oh, I, yeah, I don't think they move on from Giro in that case. I think Giro is not going anywhere. Now, what's weird is that um, he didn't get announced for a presser. I mean, they, they do announce presses, and then they have people that end up talking in those presses anyway. But Greg Roman didn't get announced for a presser, a season-ending presser. John Harbaugh did. The new defensive coordinator, Mike McDonald, did. And Eric DaCosta did. But none from Roman. So just something to think about. But also none from the special teams coordinator. So And he, he ain't going anywhere. So, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see. I wouldn't really read too much into it like that. But we won't know till we know. And the last question was sort of comment or recommendation came from my boy Calm City. He said, start your draft preview with wide receiver Christian Watson. Uh, he went to the same school as Carson Wentz. He's 6'5", 210, and he could jump. Uh, look, at, look him up on YouTube. This kid is everything that we need. Well, does he play with aggression? Does he go and get it? The, 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 or does he just wait for the ball to come to him? I feel like we need that this big body wide receiver who's going to be aggressive, who's going to be nasty, and who is going to fight for that ball, who is going to reach out and get it, not just wait like, oh, okay, it's on the way, okay, here it comes. No, reach out, go get it, and take it. If he's that, hey, bring him on. And this last question, it also comes from my guy, Martin, and appreciate all the patrons who participated in this episode, a question from subscribers, but he had just sent it, and I haven't edited the video, and we made it a couple days ago, but stuff still been crazy busy, uh, but I decided, I said, you know what, let me just add it in here, but anyway, last question. Came from my guy, Martin. He said, man, I'm so disappointed with this Ravens team. I, I really went and thought the Ravens should go out and hire Brian Flores. Uh, since to this point, no one has hired him. After the way he shut down Lamar in this offense, you think it would be beneficial to have this guy uh, on the staff. So Lamar has to face his defense every day in practice and can learn and grow. Well, that's an interesting way of looking at stuff. Uh, but instead, uh, we... Oh, yeah, but instead... Uh, we have to play it comfortable and hire people we know. Also, I feel like Harbaugh doesn't want guys like Flores on his staff, not because they are a threat to his job, but because he knows they will just be taken as soon as the season ends. Then he'll have to look for another defensive coordinator or offensive coordinator. But that's what happens when you build a Super Bowl team. Other teams want your guys. Yes, I love that. I love that, and I appreciate that so much. Anyway... He said, um, we should be looking to build a Super Bowl team, not a comfortable, well, we tried team. And people given the injury excuses this year need to wake up because guess what? People are going to get injured next year too, especially after so many people are coming off of injury. You can't expect to just start the season completely healthy from start to finish. No, I don't think anybody expects that, but it, it, next season cannot be anything like last season when it comes to injuries. It's just impossible, ain't it? Oof, I just... That that can't happen. 
Uh, anyway, he said, also, side note, maybe the Ravens did give Brian Flores a call. He turned them down. If that's the case, I can see why they wouldn't say anything because they wouldn't want the flock uh, harassing Brian Flores because he didn't want to be our defensive coordinator. But knowing our front office, they didn't even make an attempt. No, and I, I think with um, with McDonald, uh, we just, I mean, we really got no choice but to, but going to give him a fair shot. Give him a fair shot. I, I do understand your frustration with them um, making the comfortable move. Uh, and, and we just hope that because not every comfortable move is always the best move. Um, be, but it is somebody who Harbaugh trusts. Uh, <laughs> it's not necessarily always a good thing, but we just got to see. We just got to see with Mike McDonald. Um, he has been known to change it up. He is known for getting the most out of his players, and he is known from, from everything that I've heard about him. Uh, he is also known for making adjustments. So that – because the, the thing with him, with Mike McDonald, the same way I feel like with an offensive coordinator, the same way I feel like with a defensive coordinator, the same way I feel like even with a head coach, anybody that comes in here, especially – if they have everybody healthy, it's going to be really hard for them to fail. It's going to be really hard for them to fail. Like, really. Seriously. Like, it would take them going out of their way in order for them to fail. So, we'll see how he does. Um, we'll see what similarities he has with previous defensive coordinators and what differences he has with previous defensive coordinators. But... We just hope that he ends up really uh, doing a great job of the job. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, gotta made it. Well, that's my homie, ain't that right engraving, right engraving.